Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's discussion, we are going to discuss about modulation of pain. In the previous lectures, we were discussing about the nociceptors and pain. Out of the nociceptors and pain, we discussed about definition of pain, nociceptors, pain and its types. In today's discussion, we will be about the modulation of the pain. Coming to the learning objectives, the pain can be modulated at two different levels. One is the spinal level of modulation and another one is supraspinal level of modulation. There are two classifications on the spinal level. One is the gate control mechanism and the another system acting at the spinal level is opioid system. Coming to the supraspinal level of modulation, we have two mechanisms. One is the role of periaqueductal gray matter and brainstem areas. Another one is stress induced analgesia. So out of this, the favorite of examiners is gate control mechanism of theory. So let us understand one by one coming to the gate control mechanism which is at the spinal level. Most of us would have experienced this simple phenomena like whenever there is an injury, first thing we do is we shake our hand or sometimes what we do is we rub around the region of the injury. What does it do? It helps us to reduce the pain level. How does this simple mechanism happen? Let us try to understand. First thing is all of us know pain is carried via what fibers? Yes, one is the A delta, another one is C fibers. So pain is carried via the A delta and C fibers. They go to the spinal cord and activate the pain pathway which is also called as opening up of the gate mechanism of pain. It opens the gate. Whereas there are two different fibers, other two different fibers which is A alpha and A beta. This A alpha and A beta, these are cutaneous mechanosensitive afferents. So they are basically going to cause the sensation of touch and other sensations. And these mechanosensitive fibers are large in nature. They are large as well as they are carrying a different sensation other than pain. So whenever these are activated by rubbing or shaking, what will happen is these fibers go and inhibit the pain transmission mechanism. Basically, they are going to go and block the gate of pain transmission. So, what these fibers are doing? These fibers are just blocking the pain transmission. That is why this is also called as gate control mechanism. It is like as if it is putting a gate of pain transmission. This mechanism forms the basis of two important phenomena. One is the acupuncture like what they do in acupuncture, they stimulate the different regions of the body to reduce the pain sensation. So one example for this mechanism is acupuncture. Another one is called as tense. What is this tense? This tense is nothing but transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. In this transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, what nerve fibers will be stimulated? Yes. The fibers of A alpha and A beta will be stimulated. So as and when they are stimulated, they are going to create the pain transmission mechanism. Now coming to the second mechanism at the spinal level, it is also called as opioid system. How does it happen? Whenever the nociceptors are stimulated, their impulse travel along the dorsal root ganglia and finally they reach the spinal cord level and what they do is they open up the gates of calcium channel. So as and when the calcium channels are opened in the presynaptic terminal like before the synapse what will happen is this calcium will enter into the presynaptic terminal and they will cause exocytosis of the vesicles and from the exocytosis the neurotransmitters will get released. What is the neurotransmitter released for pain transmission? For the fast pain it is glutamate and for the slow pain it is substance P. This we have seen in the previous class also. So glutamate as well as substance P will be released in the synapse. This glutamate and substance P will reach the postsynaptic terminal and they will help in carrying the pain sensation to the brain's level. How does the opioid system act in this region? The opioid system acts in different levels. In our body, not only the exogenous opioids like morphine is going to work, at the same time, we have some endogenous opioids also where the body has naturally already present in it. The endogenous opioids examples are enkephalin and dynorphins. These are endogenous opioids. So how does the opioid system act? The opioid system acts at various levels. They can act at the dorsal root ganglia. 
they can act at the presynaptic terminal they can act at the postsynaptic terminal the location of these opioid receptors are strategically located in both presynaptic terminal also and postsynaptic terminal what does it do to the presynaptic terminal in the presynaptic terminal it decreases the calcium entry so as and when the calcium entry is decreased the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter is going to decrease in the postsynaptic membrane what does it do is it increases the permeability of potassium ions so as and when the potassium ions move out what will happen is it will hyperpolarize the membrane which becomes very difficult for the postsynaptic membrane to get activated so it will lead on to hyperpolarization this opioid system not only acts in the spinal level they also act on the supraspinal level they can directly influence the periaqueductal gray matter region also and cause the reduction in pain so these are the two mechanisms in spinal level one is the gate control mechanism another one is opioid system now coming to the supraspinal level first the most important role is for the periaqueductal gray matter and brain stem region so whenever the cortical influence that is impulses from the cortex is coming they reach the periaqueductal gray matter as well as another area called as locus ceruleus from the locus ceruleus the neurotransmitter released is norepinephrine norepinephrine this is very important then coming to the periaqueductal gray matter what they are going to do they are going to further stimulate two other regions through the neurotransmitter that is aspartate as well as glutamate the two regions stimulated by this mechanism are called as nucleus raphe magnus and rostral ventromedial medulla so all these areas will get stimulated and nucleus raphe magnus they will produce a neurotransmitter called as serotonin and rostral ventromedial medulla they produce the neurotransmitter norepinephrine so all this neurotransmitter finally they are going to converge in the dorsal root ganglia that is they go to the spinal cord and serotonin all of them they reach the spinal cord and what they do is they will inhibit the pain transmission and causes the reduction in pain so this is the role of periaqueductal gray matter and brain stem region by stimulating these regions we are able to control the pain so this mechanism forms the basis of some different form of acupuncture that is also called as electro acupuncture electro acupuncture what they do in this electro acupuncture is they are basically going to stimulate these regions and by the conversion of this neurotransmitters they are going to reduce the pain in the particular person now coming to the another form of pain reduction that is stress induced analgesic system what is this stress induced analgesic system sometimes whenever a person is under severe stress he will not be able to feel the pain the commonest example is whenever a soldier is fighting in the battlefield even after very severe injury he is not going to feel the pain until the battle gets end of course there will be pain after the battle is over but under strong emotion of the battlefield he is not feeling the pain how does it happen it happens because the strong emotions can block pain how do they do it they stimulate certain regions in the brain called as amygdala this amygdala will be discussed along with the limbic system but this amygdala are in the limbic system is one region which is concerned with the emotions and because of this strong emotion what is happening is it releases a neurotransmitter that is norepinephrine and this is going to reduce the pain transmission by acting at the spinal cord level and there is also release of some other substances which are called as endogenous cannabinoids this cannabinoids are peculiarly known for their euphoric actions euphoria means excessive joy under severe pain or this joy kind of feeling was also felt in some persons because of the release of cannabinoids how does it happen they release two substances called as two arachidonyl glycerol and anandamide these two substances they are going to act in their receptors which is cannabinoid receptor 1 and cannabinoid receptor 2 
by acting on these particular receptors they are going to produce the euphoric effects so this mechanism is called as stress induced analgesia because the person is having an analgesic effect due to severe stress i hope it's clear in the next lecture we'll be studying about a important topic that is called referred pain thank you for listening if you like the video drop a like and share it to your friends thank you so much